So now, without further ado, I am pleased to introduce Dr. Lynn Meltzer. So welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We're very excited to be here this afternoon to be telling you a little bit more about our, our newly launched Motivation, Effort, and Resilience Scale, which is part of the Metacog Surveys and Toolkit. I just would like to introduce um, our, the presenters for today. I'm Lynn Meltzer. I'm the President and Director of the Research Institute for Learning and Development, and also conceptualized the um, SMARTS as well as um, the, the SMARTS program that we're going to be talking about. Caitlin Vanderburg, who you briefly heard of from, is our amazing research ILD associate and educational specialist who has uh, who has actually led the the online uh, survey metacog survey and toolkit uh, under the direction of Michael Greshler, our smarts director um, and we are so excited to have Manu Shahi here today she's an educational specialist and a founder of the homework in a cafe a wonderful program that she runs in um, Currently, she's in Texas and uh, um, travels travels widely. And she'll be telling. She's a Metacog user and a Smarts user, and she'll tell you more about sort of on the ground how this works and the kinds of issues that you have a lot of questions about. So I, I'm going to spend the next twenty minutes just telling you a little bit about the survey, uh, and then Caitlin's going to take you through some examples. We're going to give it to you to, to test yourselves in a way so that you can see what it looks like. And then Manu will tell you more about what, what, what the actual experience of using these surveys is about. Um, our SMARTS program that Lindsay talked about is, is an executive function curriculum that we've developed and had in, I had online for the past seven to 10 years based on research uh, that had preceded that for 10 years before that. And um, if we hope that a lot of you will take a look at our website and take a look at the curriculum, which is which is a chock full of information, hundreds of strategy uh, strategy sheets for students, thirty lesson plans, videos, um, as well as numerous examples of how you use it. Curriculum extensions to to so that you can apply it to reading, written language, spelling, math, uh, and studying. And all the work that we talk about, that's the fund foundation for the Metacog that we're going to be discussed today and for our SMARTS curriculum, is based on this theoretical paradigm. If you think about the brain and think about yourselves right now as you're even processing information in this moment, there's a ton of information coming into the brain um, and from many, many, many different sources. And as this information comes in, you need to learn how to set goals, to organize and prioritize. Most importantly, to think flexibly and be able to shift problem-solving strategies and approaches. Um, kids and all of us need to be able to access our working memory strategies, and we need to be able to self-monitor and self-check. If we don't have the strategies for doing this effectively, that funnel gets clogged. And what does it lead to? Frustration, overload, kids having behavioral problems and acting out. So our goal and our job as educators and as psychologists is to help make students, um, help, help them to understand themselves so they know what strategies work for them and so that they can improve their, both their learning, their experience at school, their academic success. The paradigm that we use to understand metacognition is this one that we want to help students to begin to ask the questions of themselves is like, how do I think? How do I learn? How do my strengths and my weaknesses affect my learning? And what strategies work best for me? All individualized. And that's what metacognition is about. And that's our goal as educators is to help every one of our students to understand themselves. So we've developed the Metacog Surveys and Toolkit, um, which is now online, as I said, which we're very excited about launching this. This is based on research that I headed since 2004. We published this. We published this this survey system uh, in and, and uh, completed uh, research studies, um, and it comprises a number of student surveys. The ME, which is the Motivation, Effort, and Resilience Survey, which I'll show you examples of that, and Caitlin will will also um, help you to understand this. The Stratus, which is a strategy use survey. 
And then there are a number, and those two are, are, are now online. The other parts of the survey are not yet online, but we hope they will be over coming years. So the Metacog surveys are an interactive motivation and executive function um, effort and toolkit, and that is, which assesses students' perceptions of their motivation, their effort, their resilience, and the use of executive function strategies. And this system really helps students to understand their own strategy use and their motivation. Excitingly, what we are able have been able to do is to give teachers a class summary and most importantly, an action plan framework. What strategies can teachers implement for particular students and for the class? And then what the survey uh, and toolkit allows us to do is to help educators to collaborate with students so that, so that they can develop a plan, so that they, they can help kids to understand themselves. And as teachers, that you can understand your students so that you have a point, a framework for moving forward over the course of the year and teaching your students most effectively. So step the first step is that students take the Stratus and the Me surveys, and it's not very long. That's the great thing about it. We've tried, we've tried to hone it, so it's very practical. So the Me, uh, so the Stratus takes about 10, 12 minutes for students to complete, and then it generates all of these profiles. The Me is a little longer because it, not the Me, not the questionnaire itself, the survey, but then we have a whole toolkit so that which allows you to work through and discuss the kids' strategies with them so that they develop the self-understanding, which they can then take through, uh, take through the year as they approach all their academic work. And so you, as teachers or as educators or psychologists, you receive a report for your class that includes the executive function um, challenges and strengths for every student. You receive a class-wide motivation and effort report and you receive a link with what strategies work for your students. So you really have an action plan that you can work from. So let me show you the two, uh, some, some examples of the Stratus first, which is the strategy use survey. These are the kinds of questions. Uh, students will be asked to rate themselves on a range of like um, a number of questions that look like this. I have trouble breaking down my homework into smaller manageable parts. So the student rated himself a two. Or when I'm learning something new, I connect it to something I really know. The student rated himself as a four, four out of five. So he says he's pretty good at that. I have trouble organizing my thoughts before I write. Yeah, the student says he really does. He's disorganized. And on many days, I forget to hand him my homework. He says he often forgets to hand him his homework. So kids complete this, this questionnaire, which, as I said, takes about 10, 12, 12 minutes maximum. And then virtually immediately, they get this, this printout so that they understand themselves. So every student gets this, our five, five areas I talked about, a hand printout saying, okay, these are the five key executive function processes and your strength is in self-monitoring and self-checking. So you're really good at self-monitoring and checking and, and this is what it means. These are the tasks that are related to self-checking and self-monitoring, like checking and correcting your classroom, your classroom assignments, checking and correcting your work learning a dance sequence that you have to check, applying for a job. So we apply it to every domain, not only the academics and to the social domains as well, well as well, um, like changing the way you relate to another, uh, another student. And then ways you can build on your strengths, like put in a, po a, a post-it note uh, on your desk to remind you to, um, to, to, in the morning before you leave for school, pack your, put everything in your backpack. Or before you leave for home, put everything in your backpack. Um, and in the evening, um, when you close down your computer, make sure that you have completed all the work you have to do, completed your test, uh, your uh, prep for your tests, etc. cetera. Um, and then the student profile also tells their challenges. Like in the students, it tells them, wow, you, your weakness is, and we call it challenges rather than weakness, is goal setting. So what does it mean if you're having trouble with goal setting? And what are some things you can do to improve goal setting? Um, like choose goals that are doable. And, um, and then most importantly, and what teachers love, is that we give them a link with strategies that they can implement for both the particular student and for the, for the class. Uh, and there's a list of 10 and priorities. And you, can, you as teachers can then, you can sift and sort, you can choose whatever you want within that list. But what it's saying is like, okay, most of the students in your class would benefit from help with metacognition or, or goal setting. 
So that's what they gen- that so that gets generated in terms of a class report. So the student then has an understanding of his or her um, st- strategies, and the teacher then gets a report saying, "Well, in this case, four of your students have um, have some strengths in organizing and prioritizing, and very few of your students are good at flexible thinking." And in the area of challenges, many of your students have trouble goal setting. So from your point of view as a teacher or educator, um, you can look at the profiles for each one of the students individually, as well as the class profile I showed you. And then you can say, okay, I need to start working on goal setting. And these are lessons and smarts that I could use. They're already already scripted. If I want that, I already have the PowerPoints. I already have the strategy worksheets I can begin implementing immediately. The second part of this, so that's the stratus, which helps, as I said, helps kids to understand their strategy use and helps you as educators to understand um, your students' strategy use, both as individuals and as a group. And so that you have an action plan and specific strategies you can implement. The second questionnaire system is the ME, Motivation Effort Survey, we've just launched um, two weeks ago. And this gets students to think about, and, and, and you as teachers, what motivates your students? What helps them to persevere? And on which academic tests your students work harder? Because as we know, some students will really persevere on social studies because they love it and they hate math. And so therefore they're gonna, so they're gonna bottom out and not put in the effort that they'll put into social studies. And so when we get our students to rate themselves, they begin to ask themselves those questions. So I'm going to ask Caitlin to take over and to show you, to take you through the through an activity which helps you to understand what the questions are we ask students. Great, thank so you. So should I stop sharing here, Caitlin? Sure, yes, I'll, I'll share my screen. Um, in the chat, I have put a link to a brief form that asks you all to rate your motivation and effort. It is a preview of the full survey. The full survey is much longer, so we aren't able to administer it now, but you'll get to see sample profiles and a sample class report after. So we invite you to take a minute or two to open up the form. Um, take a look at the questions. There are six questions. Uh, in general, I'm a hard worker. I spend as much time as I need to get my work done. I keep working even when the work is difficult. I finish my work even when it is boring. I am good at bouncing back after a setback, and I do not let problems stop me from reaching my goals. And you'll see that the responses range from never to always. So we'll give everyone a chance to respond, and then we'll take a look at our own um, breakdown of responses here. All right, so we can start taking a look at the responses. You can continue to complete the questions and submit your answers, but we have fifty resp- over 50 responses so far. So about 64% um, responded that usually you would rate yourself as a hard worker, and about 33% say always. In terms of spending as much time as, I need, as you need to get your work done, about 60% said usually. said always, and about 8% said sometimes. For number three, I keep working even when the work is difficult. So we have um, more responses for this question for sometimes. So um, 20% said sometimes, about 34% always, and about 45% said usually. And as we go through these questions, you can think about what your students might respond to these questions. Think about how they would reflect on their own learning. Number four, I finish my work even when it is boring. So about 50% say usually. Um, We do have some responses for rarely. So a couple responses for rarely. um, And then about 35% who said they always finish their work even when it's boring. Number five, I'm good at bouncing back after a setback. 50% say usually. And then we have about 28% who say sometimes and 21% who say always. And we do have a couple responses for rarely. And then last question, number six, I do not let problems stop me from reaching my goals. So about half say um, usually, and then we have about the same responses for always and for sometimes. Great. 
So Lynn, I'll just share um, really quickly. I'll do a separate share before um, passing it back to you. But I, I wanted to show everyone just briefly um, when students take the full survey, they get a profile, which you'll see in a second, Dr. Meltzer will take us through some examples, but students get to reflect on their motivation, on their persistence, and then they get to rate areas in school in which they work the hardest and in which they put the least effort. And so you get um, a snapshot, a profile for each student that they get to kind of think through these questions more deeply and spend time reflecting on them. And then you also get a class report where you can see at a glance more easily um, your students, how they rate themselves in terms of motivation and effort, resilience and strategy use. You can see really easily what they rate as what motivates and demotivates them, their interests, and the strategies that they want to try out themselves. And so we have um, many other aspects of the class report here. So you can see how students are rating themselves um, across different areas, different subjects. And then finally, on our last page, we show the different areas. So you can see across your class, how are students rating themselves? Do they put the most effort in reading or writing? And you can see here it's broken down by subject and by area. And then finally, we show the students, and this is an average of their scores of what they rated on the survey. And again, the areas that they rate that they put in the most effort and the least effort. All right, Lynn, I'll pass it back to you. Thank you, Caitlin. That was wonderful. And for all of you, um, you have a sense of sort of the kinds of questions. So I'll go in, I'll now so give you a little bit more detail about some of those slides that uh, Caitlin just showed you in terms of the profiles of your students. So, um, so that you, I, I'll sort of go more slowly through this in more, and in more detail so you can under, so you, you can get the um, grasp sort of what we're looking at. So after taking the survey with questions like you just took for yourselves, Students, some of the uh, information that students get is a sense of areas where they work hardest and areas where they work least hard, if you want to put it that way. So areas that we would say we took to staying motivated. So for this student, um, he said the area he works hardest in is writing. And then we ask, why do you work hardest in writing? And he says, because I understand it. My teacher was great. I had friends going through it with me. And what are the strategies for staying motivated? Because the point is that kids need to, you know, from one year to another, if, if they if it's all dependent on a wonderful teacher, that's not really sustainable often. It's like, how are you going to keep yourself motivated? Um, and his point was, I'm going to reread the, my, my work after my first draft. And then ways of challenging yourself. So his point, so he chooses biology, lab reports, and history narratives are more challenging. That's why I need to sort of really work on those more effectively. And the area where the student says he puts in the least effort is social studies. Um, then he, we ask him to ask themselves why. And, and, and asking when kids are asked to reflect and to think about why did I do this? Why did I put in less effort? That's really important because it helps them to understand this issue, that co this concept of motivation and effort. It's not that, okay, I just I just didn't do it, but rather that, well, it interested me. Be and breaking down the process because it was it was too long or it was boring. But so the student, what do you do when you were stuck? Um, take a break. Uh, do something else. Come back to it after that break. Um, and and for this student, he says that social studies is challenging for me because it's not a, it's, he says it's not a serious subject for me. I don't particularly like it. I don't find it relevant. Um, so by going through these questions, students then begin to, and as students analyze this, they recognize what is what are the barriers to putting in the amount of effort and, and hard work that's needed so that they can do well, if that's, and to set goals that make sense for themselves. So the kinds of printouts that we give students are these, we decided that we wouldn't use a star system, our team, um, because the point is that not that you're weak in, in motivation, but just like the, this, this is what your 
overall profile looks like. So for Anastasia, she rates herself as a four star for motivation effort, a four star for resilience, and a three and a half star for strategy use. And what motivates her, she says, are good grades. Uh, what demotivates her is when is the work is when there's the work is too hard or when I'm being compared to other people. Um, and the strategies that she selected are strategies for memorizing information more easily, which means learning mnemonics and crazy phrases, and making sure she has time to review everything. She says at the end, and as a student, and then there are qualitative, there's a section for qualitative comments, and she says, as a student, I think I'm average. I'm a hard worker who procrastinates a lot. I enjoy learning new things. So once again, it's breaking down this process so that students begin to think about how they think and how they learn. And that in itself is very empowering for students. And for you as teachers, educators, it's a great time to do it. It's usually the beginning of the school year, sort of often January as students come back from a break or um, the end of the, of the marking period and to do it a number of times so that students can actually see their the changes that they've made for themselves. As I said, it's very empowering. Another student, Michael, he rated himself as three and a half stars for effort, resilience, four stars, and strategies, three stars. What motivates him, he says, good grades. What demotivates him is not knowing how to get started. His interests are hobbies. And what strategies he selected for himself he thinks will help him are creating an outline before you start writing your first draft and what the outline should include. And he says he thinks he's a great student. So, there too, he can go through this process and figure out what strategies work well for him. Caitlin briefly showed you this, um, this part of the profile. Students get this um, prop up for themselves. It's like, okay, for Donna, oh, I work really hard in reading, writing, math, in homework and studying. I don't work as hard in social studies, science, and long-term projects. Um, but she still rates herself a four. So this is someone who puts in a lot of effort regardless. For other students, they're going to, there's going to be more of a discrepancy. There you go. The area where you put in the least effort. And then this is a case study. We just wanted to show you for a particular case what, ca what came out for the student. He said that he put least effort in math. And why do you rate? Math is an area where you don't work as hard. Um, too much to do. The details are overwhelming. I find it boring. Uh, it's hard to get started. It's hard to understand what I'm supposed to solve it for. What do you do when you're stuck? And he says, I slump down and I feel tight. In other words, I am stressed. I am giving up. I don't know what to do. For another student, he said science was the area where he put in the least effort. Why do you rate science as, as your um, greatest difficulty? The details are overwhelming and it's hard to get started. What do you do when you feel stuck? I freeze and I don't do it. Avoidance. Um, that anxiety leads to that avoidance pattern. So we did a number of pilot studies using the me. That Manu was involved in a number of our pilot studies. You'll hear from her in a few, a few minutes. So the kind of feedback we asked the students to tell us, what would they tell another student about taking the me? And some of the students' comments were, will tell another student to try their best, to be honest with your answers and think about each question. I tell them you can learn new strategies for school. Um, and what did you learn from the survey? These are pretty empowering, these comments. I need to change, said one student. And that's really, for a middle school student, that's pretty um, insightful and thoughtful and, and, and mature. What I learned from the survey will help me work through my challenges, said another student. Another student said, I'll show my teacher how my motivation and effort works. And yet another student, I can try new strategies for school and studying. So a few quotes from students. I really have a lot more strategies than I thought I did, which was cool. A second student, a high school student said, I wish my teachers understood that I'm different than a lot of other students. I can use this survey to explain to teachers what I need. That's really um a great quote because it, it tells us that the student it helps the student to understand who he was as a learner and to see how he can how he can interact with his teacher to say this is what I need. And the third high, the third high school student said it's important to know your strengths and challenges so you know what you need to work on, what you're good at, and depending on your goals, how you can work to better yourself. Um, 
this is what we're aiming for. These are our goals in using the, 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 strat the, the stratus to help students get to that point where they feel like they have a roadmap for themselves, their own learning. That's what helps them to succeed in middle school, high school, and most importantly, in college and as, as adults. So I hope that this um, has given you an overall framework for the Metacog survey. Um, obviously, we sort of just touched the surface because of limited time, but we hope that you'll go on our, our website, the, this is the link, and that you'll take a look at it yourselves. Um, and we would love to hear from you. As always, we, um, all of our staff are amazing, wonderful, and love, uh, co love connecting. So please reach out to us with any questions you have. Um, and I'm going to, at this point, turn, uh, turn the floor over to Manu to tell you as one of our uh, really gifted smart uh, users and subscribers who are experienced with the Metacog. So let me stop sharing. Wonderful. Well, Manu, um, I, we do have a few questions for you. Um, so first, we would love to know, how do you use the Metacog surveys to help your students understand their learning profiles, as well as their effort, strategy use, and persistence? Oh, Manu, you are muted. Okay. So um, I've been a big, big, big fan of Smart's program forever since the time I uh, came to Boston. Um, and I always feel that knowing the student um, is extremely important versus throwing a blanket statement and teaching everybody the same thing all the time. So when I started giving the executive function the first survey, it was really awesome to figure out, uh, you know, what is the strength? They are really good in goal setting and, you know, trying to figure out what strategy to use. But when you guys came up with the, the second part uh, with the me survey, that just changed the game for me completely. So I work independently with the students to do executive functions, uh, study skill coaching, but a part, big part of my program is with the school districts. So when I showed this to the superintendent and then I showed it to the principal, they all said they have never seen anything like this before. So there was like literally uh, the principal had a jaw dropping experience. She like, whoa. And then we showed it to the special ed uh, teacher, the counselors, and everybody had the same exactly same uh, expression that they have never seen something so powerful. That was the word they used for me. Um, so what they did is we are piloting it in uh, the school district where they have, um, I get, they gave this survey to students. Uh, we have around 30 students who are at risk of not passing are, are graduating. And we did a survey um, on them and it has been very, very powerful on us helping them, um, you know, with their academic journey. Wow, thank you. Um, and I guess the, the next question we have connects kind of to students' parents. How do you use the surveys to help your students' parents understand their children more easily? I'm just gonna share one, like a life-changing experience for me with this. So the day we did the survey and the results came back, that very day I had, uh, you know, Dawson's mom called me and like, talking and complaining about Dawson's and his behavior. And right there, you had emailed me the results and I was reading the results while mom was complaining and I could actually answer every single question about the Like her complaints was Dawson was not making any effort into his subject. He had no time management skill. He gives up easily. I don't know why he gives up. And I am totally frustrated mom. And I didn't even have to think. I was just actually looking at your survey and answering back. And she goes, that's my son. As simple as that. So that's how powerful uh, it was, uh, especially the results are amazing. Um, and it's not only for me as from my business perspective, and I shared it with my tutors and the teachers, everybody who reads it, uh, it's so much easy to have a conversation and then tell them that they need time management versus just giving them an executive function. Um, it just connects really well. That's great. Thank you. We actually have a, a question from uh, an attendee asking, what grade levels um, do you work with? Uh, fifth and above, fifth grade and above. But this program right now, it's been piloted for sixth, seventh and eighth graders. Okay. 
That's the program at the district that you mentioned? At the district. But, you know, we've tried it with other kids too. Uh, especially the kids who are going into high school, this works really well because getting them ready for high school and uh, it motivates them that I'm really good at this. So making an average or a good to an excellent is so much easier. Um, so we know. And then that particular part of the survey where giving an example of when you have used your skill in another area, um, that is extremely important because we can connect. This is something that you did great. How did you feel? And how would you like to use the same feeling somewhere else? Absolutely. Um, well, our, our next question is about um, how you have used the surveys to help students' teachers understand students' motivation, um, as well as their EF strengths and challenges and the strategies that could benefit them. So if you could share a bit about what it was like working with the students' teachers, um, getting buy-in there. Um, so what we have is access to the database where we look up Canvas, Skyward, Google Classroom, and we see all the assignments. So a big part of our business is data analysis to see what's going on with the student. So now what we do is we look at the survey. First of all, if it's sixth graders, that comprehensive part, like, okay, everybody is struggling in, um, I think one of the things that came back with the survey was uh, long-term projects and test taking. Um, so once I know that everybody has that issue, so we keep that in mind when they are doing the projects and we're checking the grades of the students. Because in English, you know, frankly, a, a math teacher is just looking at the math subjects. English is just ELA, but we look at the entire picture. Um, so we send an email to the counselor saying they have a project coming up. Please use this strategy for long-term projects from the EF skills uh, while helping the kid because he did say he struggled with starting the project. And as a result, uh, because that was in the me survey, and then we give the strategy from the EF skills and they combine the two and email the teacher. There is a different website uh, that we use for uh, IEP and 504, which actually now uh, we are working with them to give access to the teachers where they can see the results of the survey, the strategies right there. Um, so that way we know teachers are busy. We're trying to make it easy for them. Absolutely. Um, well, another, just another question, Manu, because I know you often look at the big picture and looking over time, but, um, do you have any goals for your students maybe to administer again and see their progress? Could you tell us a bit about what that looks like? We did, uh, the first nine weeks of school, all these kids that we got from the district were at risk of, uh, not passing, uh, 78% of the kids actually passed and they actually uh, were self, you know, recognized by the principal, the superintendent up on stage because they were constantly being called um, by the teachers. So we, uh, we have a goal like, okay, we don't, we don't expect the kids to pass all subjects. So we are saying, okay, let's focus on the subject that they feel that they're really good at. But it's a part of the surveys, I'm good at math, but the results show it differently. That might say that I really want to do good in math but I need some strategies. So once we are able to bring that goal and say, prove it to the student saying, yes, now you're really good in math and the confidence goes up, that was the goal. We can start doing the other subjects too, instead of doing everything, because we know the teenage brain is not going to listen to all the different sub, you know, things together. Yeah, definitely. Um, Manu, is there anything else that you would like to share from your experience piloting? Any plans that you have, you know, going forward with the surveys? Um, one thing I will say, the, the, the report that comes from your office regarding how the classroom looks like, those who are attending and they are teachers, it's going to be amazing because you, a, lot, a lot of stuff kicks in right there. You can see on an average how your class looks like. So um, that's very powerful. I definitely plan to use it with other, you know, we are hoping to get more schools because the superintendent really loves this program. So piloting it in more schools um, and uh, helping more kids and teachers. Um, and I think what we typically do is we email the, the counselor and CC the teacher with the strategy. So that way they don't, you know, frankly, the teachers don't feel threatened and saying, oh, I'm not doing my good job, you know, doing my work. Or it's another email coming in. So it's a very subtle way we bring it in. But the counselors really appreciate it because while they're counseling the students at school, they can see their motivation and they get really nice nuggets to talk, which is focused on some their behavior and everything together. So that's what our goal is to spread it more 
um, in Texas for you guys. That's great. Oh, Lynn, you're Lynn, you're muted. Sorry, because we you still have time, a fair amount of time, and we know that you the, the extent of your experience with both the metacog and smarts is very is broad and deep. <laughs> so we just wanted to give you this opportunity to just tell people a little bit more about the programs, just um, for whatever whatever aspects you think were most helpful and and how, you know, what recommendations you have for implementation? Um, there is definitely, when it comes to smarts, and, you know, I obviously, Caitlin and Michael both are amazing. So please do reach out if you guys haven't. They have, they're super, super helpful. And I love about the organization is the fact that you're always improving and bringing more in a very uh, strategic way, which is not, uh, we master one thing and we move on to the next. Um, but the one thing I did realize when I bought the program was strategy. Sometimes I don't have enough time to teach the kids strategies. Um, so what I realized is there is that section in the program where you can do 15 minutes. Um, you can take parts of the SMARTS program and bring it in five minutes that you're teaching kids. Um, kids are not ready to listen till they are actually feeling that there is a need uh, to do something. So taking permission from them and giving them the strategy, uh, the strategy for ELA that smarts have, I'm just giving you the ones that I really enjoyed uh, and have used it over and over again in the program with my, I've been doing it for a few years now. One is that, you know, the, the ELA stuff is really powerful. That really helps, uh, you know, you pick the strategies and what we have done is we have mashed the executive functions like, you know, breaking it, study strategies and executive functions on an Excel sheet, started putting in the strategies. When they take the status survey, um, it gives you the percentage, like, you know, what question they got wrong and things like that. Do take out time to study that. Um, the other part that is really helpful is taking the survey in the beginning of the year in Jan three times a year has helped us a lot to see actually are they making any improvement or not. Uh, we focused on one subject versus all subjects, as I said, said it earlier too, that has helped. Um, my business is two-sided. One is, you know, after school, we do coaching and tutoring with kids. Uh, obviously, um, we're using it there all the time. Um, the other side is the district and uh, helping the teachers improve. Um, so it can be used for after school or during school. So that is the beauty of the program for SMARTS. Um, and I'll be frank, I have used a lot of other programs out there in the country, but SMARTS has been something quick, easy, and very, very helpful uh, when we actually, it's, you know, the results can be easily seen when we're helping kids. Absolutely. Marty, can you give us some, ex um, I'm sure you have particular students in mind who, you know, who you've, who you've used the Metacog and the um, and SMARTS with. Can you tell, can you give people a snippet of some of the, your, you know, success stories with students? Um, I will tell you there was a, a family of three kids who were doing, uh, we would, I was doing an executive coaching class with them and uh, ELA was an issue. And uh, I was hoping to target the, the fifth grader and the seventh grader. It was the 10th grader who said, I wish somebody had taught me these strategies in ELA when I was little, because I would not have these issues now. And this is the quickest and the easiest way for me to write an essay. So I still remember that very clearly coming from three kids right there. So every time I've used that strategy, that has really helped a lot. I still have the, the binder, Lynn. Uh, I know you guys are online. I'm more of a paper person. So yeah. I still have the binder that I use uh, quite often to bring out stuff. Um, then even the time management strategies, um, when it comes to the teachers, uh, they always like those 15 minutes lessons a lot, frankly. That is something they don't have enough time, especially in Texas. We have this issue with the star testing and they have to do uh, the 30 the hour of mandatory tutoring. So very limited to the time uh, they have. And the other thing uh, which is really powerful that has happened with the your strategies is what the district is looking on is we are so busy testing the kids into with IEP and 504s or, you know, the new names that we have and sending them to teachers for tutoring. Sometimes they don't need tutoring. They just need these strategies 
And that is what the district is trying to look at, saying we can save teachers the hassle of, you know, extra tutoring hours and have these kids learn these strategies through the from the counselors. And that was an aha moment when actually it came from the superintendent that that's what they would like to use the program for. And that, that's really great to hear that because that's sort of one of the goals here, that this is not a, this, this, the, the, the program, the SMARTS program and Medicog you can use for everyone, for every student. It's not a special, it's not particularly specifically for students with special needs, it, it, but it, it levels the playing field for everyone. Because also the, the issue with using the strat, the stratus is some kids who are very, who are very br- smart have uh-huh. incredible memories, like cruise through school. And then they get to college and within the first semester, they are taking a semester off because they, they've had so much difficulty. They fail out often in the first semester and they need to take a, take a break before they come back. And the issue is that they've never been strategic. It just sort of things they just relied on good memory. And as a result of that, they often don't use planners. They don't use um, systems for organizing. They don't sort of, they don't set goals. They just sort of go, go along in school and do well. Um, so you, so when they begin to understand what it means to put in the motivation, to put in the effort that's needed to persist and to be strategic, it's like, these are going to help you long-term. Um, and most importantly, if they begin to understand what their own strengths and challenges are, that's that's more empowering for them to realize, like, look, I'm really not that, I'm not good at absolutely everything. I do need some areas I need to sort of work more strategically. What's very um, interesting for us is that because we've always provided one-on-one uh, in, through our institute, one-on-one um, tutoring and executive function coaching, is some of our students who've worked with us for a number of years with one of some of our staff um, have uh, have have learned strategies that they have then taught <laughs> to their roommates and to their college dorm mates <laughs> who have you know had flying have had you know the valedictorians of their school who get into college and then are having trouble and our students who who were really struggling to some extent through school, but became, learned all these strategies are, co- are coaching them. So these strategies are good for all kids. Um, Lynn, I will add to this that, uh, you know, obviously you're the research expert, but my understanding was people who are really learning executive functions right now, especially our students, uh, their divorce rate actually goes down in their mid thirties. Uh, that's a new research that was, I was like, that makes sense because now you have all those issues that happen in relationship because you have good executive function. And uh, one thing that I learned is doing it for a while is executive function, when you're teaching these kids strategy, it's a long-term investment. It is not something they, you might teach them in seventh grade and it'll come back in 12th grade or maybe in college that, oh, I remember learning the strategies. And so many times moms will tell me that I really need this. Um, I have actually, moms who've actually learned how to do time management since the time I started doing this, uh, that has helped. So another of your pro- uh, strategies that has worked really good in combination with this is the top three error thing. We actually have that where I would recommend to the teachers having it in the classroom when they start a unit, saying what is the error they're making. So when they do the reviews, they can see majority of the kids are making this error. Um, they are not turning you know, the signs in or some kind of an issue that everybody in general is having so that the teacher can help them at the end of the unit or um, the kids, if the class has a lot of kids with ADD, ADHD, we know that that every 15 minutes a check-in before a break is important for them. So that really helps that, okay, this is an error that is happening. Uh, that reduces the stress for test and it's all connected. So the top three error one has always uh, worked like magic uh, with the coaching and the tutoring uh, that comes from your, your program again. That's great to hear because it's very easy. The top three hits is what you told me. Yes. That's is one of the easiest. Hits. Yeah. One of the easiest to implement, really. I might use that in my relationship with my husband of 28 years, like top three errors. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
yeah, that, that research you mentioned is really, that's interesting. That's fascinating. I didn't know that about the divorce rate. Well, <laughs> that's great to know. It, and it makes sense, you know, time management, <laughs> emotional control, everything right there. Organization, uh, the issues that kick in. So yeah, it, it goes way beyond just the classroom. I mean, you're absolutely right. So Caitlin, should we open it up for general questions now? We have ten more minutes. We'll just yeah. end it. We already have a few <coughs> in the chat. Um, uh, a little while ago, someone asked, um, "Is there a reason why these two surveys were developed separately?" So, Lynn, I'll pass that to you for the research and development question. Sure. Um, well, actually, they weren't developed separately. They were developed together originally <laughs> in 2004 when I published them and did a, a huge amount of research on, the, on motivation and effort and strategy use because our theory, the, the theory that binds all of our work is that, is that of a, 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 the, a core interaction between metacognition and executive function strategies and that those are the foundation for building students' effort, persistence, um, resilience, and uh, and academic self concept that students' self confidence improves when they are when they are strategic, when they understand who they are as learners, and that builds resilience and academic success. So they were developed together, and as hard copies, they were used together together with the teacher versions, but. We've moved them out um, individually as we've launched them online, just because development of online uh, processes, uh, online systems takes much longer <laughs> and it's much more complicated and it's complicated for, for you as educators to implement. So it's just a pragmatic issue and it's a matter of sort of having the appropriate funding um, in order to, uh, to be able to create the online versions that take a lot of time. And a lot of we did a lot of piloting, as we always do. We do we do based on research, so that we we really know um, in terms of the research and in terms of the pilot the pilot studies that these that these systems work, and that um, that students and teachers will benefit. And just a quick addition there is that for both the me online and the Stratus online, we ran student focus groups as well. So we had time to run the groups and review their results and make sure that their feedback was incorporated into the final product, along with the pilots that Dr. Lin that Dr. Meltzer uh, mentioned. Um, the next question is: Have you looked at the success results with specific reference to neurodivergent students? since we know their motivation is physiologically different from other students. Sorry, could you repeat the question, Caitlin? Absolutely. Um, have you looked at the, at the results for, like, for the ME survey with specific reference to neurodivergent students, since we know their motivation is physiologically different from other students? So all of the... Um... All of the, the analyses and the research studies we've done have been with a range of students, students with special, special education needs as well as students who are average achiever or are above average. It's the whole range. We haven't, we, so, and we've know, we, we know from over the years um, that, these, that these strategies really work. What our research over the years have shown is that these strategies, these executive function strategies are essential for kids with a range of learning and attention difficulties. Um, and they benefit all students. So in other words, our base learner of every student in a classroom can benefit, but for students who have any kind of this, what you're calling neurodiversity, um, any kinds of challenges in learning, they're essential. So that's, the, um, that's sort of the differentiator. And that's what we've shown through all of our work over the years. Um, I, I received a question about how frequently throughout an academic year we would recommend administering the Stratus survey and the ME survey. So what we recommend, and Manu, you, you referred to this, so you can add to this, is that there's, I mean, there's no absolute. It's really your decision could often, there's a pragmatic, there's a practical issue. But it's great to be able to use it at the beginning of the year and then again at the towards the end of the year. 
because then you have a comparison. Most importantly, students have that comparison. So they know how much they've changed and how much, how much more strategic they are. And then that can then follow them into the following school year. So Manu, do you want to comment? The only thing I would say is uh, the kids who are at risk, like we got like 30 kids who are at risk. So when we did the survey again in December and their numbers were like, you know, they are doing good, we could get them out of the program and then have more kids come in. So that way the teachers are not burdened, you know, with so many kids. So there is a group of students we choose. And then if they are doing really well, they, you know, they have this academic scores have improved, behavior has improved, they've graduated from the program and we could add more. So I would say just a midpoint and then end of the year is important. Uh, especially if their scores are low uh, to decide about summer school or next year, if they want to be entered back into the program. So I would say three times would be a good touch point. Yeah, that would be wonderful to be able to do that. And as we said, it doesn't take that long. Yeah. One question that was, um, it was answered in the chat, but I just wanted to bring it up is that someone asked if they could use the, the surveys without the SMARTS curriculum. And while, well, yes, that is possible, but I just wanted to to mention that it is um, even more powerful to use them together. Um, I think Lindsay responded in the chat that the Stratus survey gives SMARTS lesson recommendations that really target the areas of challenge that come up for students. And so um, the surveys connect back to SMARTS and, and it is great to use them together. So just to elaborate on what Caitlin was saying and what Lindsay had said, um, you absolutely can use them on their own. They're designed to be used uh, uh, on their own if you so choose, and then you can link it with any part of your own curriculum. But as, as Caitlin had said, using adding the SMARTS curriculum to it may, just increases the power, the power of use because, it, well, it makes things easier because from the stratus, the kids, the students now understand what the, what strategies they you need they would benefit from, and the, the smarts curriculum just gives it to you. There, you don't have to start inventing strategies or searching to figure out where to find them and how to teach them. You have the powerpoints, you have the lesson plans, you have the strategy strategy worksheets, but it's not required at all. It just um, it just adds more uh, power and strength to what you're doing, and saves you a lot of time. <laughs> We have time for one more question, Caitlin. Okay, yes, we actually have one here. Someone's asking about uh, whether SMARTS can uh, only connects to purely EF or if it can also be connected to math and ELA content. Um, so. so the answer is absolutely connects to the content for everything. And I'll... Let Manu tell you more. Manu mentioned a number of times the issues around ELA, that sort of how it helps. Um, it connects to everything. And we also have what we call lesson extensions for, for the um, SMARTS secondary. The, just We didn't mention this, but there is a SMARTS version for elementary school. And then there's a different SMARTS curriculum for, for middle and high school. And, and also that can be used for students at the even in their freshman year in college. Um, so the SMARTS curriculum extensions help give you all sorts of suggestions, very powerful suggestions for applying these SMART strategies to reading, written language, biology, science, um, test taking. Michael and Shelley, Michael Greshla, SMART director, and Shelley Levy, as our director of our um, uh, some of our SMARTS trainings, really worked extensively on this for a while, and, and the ideas are, are wonderful. So, Manu, do you want to add anything to that? Because you mentioned the ELA piece. Um, ELA, definitely, even for uh, science, uh, I would say the, the way we did the note, the triple note, that really helps putting the diagrams and the, uh, what is it, uh, the formulas in. So, yes, uh, it depends how creative we are. Uh, it's the same strategy which can be used uh, for long-term projects in science. I would say the time management things really works really well. But specifically for the content, um, there are th things I have used more for ELA personally than for math, because uh, except for uh, mnemonics, that's pretty much it. But majority of the time I've used for ELA. Oh, thank you, Manu. Um, I know we're at it. We're we're um, at time. So 
Uh, thank you, everyone, for being here with us today. We really appreciate it. I don't know. Um, we hope that you will become part of our our expanding smarts community. We have people using smarts and using the Metacog all over the world. We have more and more people, more and more uh, countries represented as part of our smarts community. And we also hope that you'll check out our, our uh, website and our um, and all the wonderful um, free content that we provide as part of the smarts website. Um, Caitlin and and uh, Lindsay, do you want to add anything? I just wanted to say thanks again to you, Dr. Meltzer and Caitlin, for organizing this webinar. Manu, we really appreciate your insight and in giving us some firsthand knowledge about how you have used the Metacog surveys and toolkit. Um, please don't hesitate to reach out if there are questions. I know it was a quick chat and a lot of info to sort of a lot of numbers to kind of keep track of, but um, please do reach out. I'd be happy to speak with anybody or any of us would be uh, <laughs> happy to help answer questions. So thank you, Dr. Meltzer. Thank you, Caitlin. And thank you, Manu. You're welcome.